whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. Amen. We have a couple of scriptures for your reading. God bless our leader tonight.
You know, you, you, you remember all throughout scripture when, when Joshua was going into battle, he said, be strong. Don't fear. Because sometimes life, obstacles, and circumstances can tower over us, but they don't have to get the best of us. And so the word comes when that fear tries to tower, God's word begins to grow taller, and then it begins to tower over the fear. Hence, light begins to shine over the darkness. Everybody see what I'm talking about? So, everybody experiences fear. Uh, there are big fears, and uh, there are little ones, but nevertheless, we have them. And as I said, fear is a tool. Write, write this down. Here's a tool the enemy uses against us to make us just unhappy, to destroy that peace that we have. You ever notice when there's fear and trepidation in your heart, it just makes that joy that's supposed to be remaining within you? Okay? And so it begins as a thought and then it creates and be, brings out emotions. Y'all gotta watch how the enemy works in the darkness. So fear is the opposite of faith. Fear over faith. And one of the things I recognize, Pastor, is that when I began to research this, there were so many commentators that their end result in pinning this was if a choice that we choose fear over faith. In other words, you have to make that choice. And it's always going to be right before you. Y'all know how simple it is to choose something? Okay, y'all say yes, right? Okay, well think about when you get ready to go, I'm gonna give something very simple. When you get ready to go to work, and you just had a, got up, as they say, on the wrong side of the bed, and you just like, I don't know, you ever been in the closet, I don't know what I want to wear? Uh-huh. It's difficult just to choose something to wear, isn't it? Yeah. Well, guess what? Sometimes it's just like that. If you, uh, if you are not mindful, of the tactics of the enemy, you will sit there deliberating about well, which one, fear or faith? Which one? Which one? Uh huh. Y'all say, say, well, it's so simple. You just choose what you got. You got a whole bunch of law. I got a carol. I know you do. Got my three closets full of clothes. But I can, I bet my dollar that on Sunday morning she's still saying, what am I going to do? I can bet you my dollar. Okay, right? Am I right? See? Yes. But this is what it is. Your faith has to be brand new, just like his mercies renewed day by day. Your faith has to be brand new in God. It has to be revived and alive. Y'all say, well, where is that coming from, T? Okay, I'm just using my natural stuff here. Carolyn can help me out. When I go to the store and I buy me a new outfit, uh-huh, especially if I bought it on a Saturday. Guess what I'm wearing on a Sunday? Yeah. Ooh, yes. So that's why I say your faith has to be brand new because then it becomes no choice because it's right there before you. I don't care how bad the night was, but you already know when you went to bed, I'm going to wear that. That's how it must be with your faith. I don't care what the enemy presents to you. I already know I'm going to choose faith because why? It's stirring all down on the inside. So when I went to bed the night before, I had faith on my mind. Yeah. Oh. Tell me. Yeah. Am I right about it? Right. Y'all know you get some new clothes. That's how it is. In other words, faith has to always be before you. Yeah. Yes. So there's the opposite of faith. And God wants us to walk by faith. Whereas the enemy wants us to walk, not just by fear, but he wants us to walk in fear. Mm. He wants us to walk out in fear right. of everything. He wants us to be afraid of life. He wants us to be afraid of sickness. Yes. Afraid of life. Oh, yes. So it's a choice. And we can't avoid it. So it's either this, either you're walking in faith or you're walking in fear. Okay? Faith, faith.
faith in the face of fear stretches us to grow up spiritually. I believe that we are in a time where God is stretching the faith of the believers. He's stretching our faith. Even through disappointment, guess what? He's stretching our faith. Even when we don't get what we want, it's a stretching of your faith. Because here again, the presentation is still there. Faith over fear. And so in Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 17, we recognize that faith comes from hearing what? The word of God. Faith comes from hearing the message of hope that we have. That's why I said that it becomes new because it must be ever before us. And so that's where the challenge comes in for the believer. Because when it's not renewed and when it's not refreshed within your spirit, that means it becomes something that's like distant and becomes ultimately obsolete. You can't pull it from nowhere if it's not there. So you have to be able to pull your faith from somewhere inside of you. Otherwise, fear is going to be ever present. Okay? So, God is faithful to those that believe and trust in him. When we choose God, ooh, do y'all know what that does to him when we when we choose to have that faith? Oh, fear, let me tell you what happens. What happens is Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, it says, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. He said, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with thee. The right hand of my righteousness. Let me tell y'all where that passage of scripture came from. This morning, when I was in prayer, we were in prayer. God, I was in prayer. So when I, I, like I said, no matter how big, I I quote the scripture. You know, lately I've been quoting real good. (laughs) They coming off my toes, right? Praise God. They hanging off the toes. I'm walking and I'm seeing (laughs) scriptures. Scriptures, you know. Because that's this season right now. It's just a season, mother. I'm just telling the truth. I'm seeing. That's why I want yeah. out the scriptures. I'm a healing. Yes. Yeah. So, and I know I was putting it all in there. Pastor Paul packing it down. But uh, sometimes, I, you know, I talked about just something that's in there. Now, I begin to think, and I'm praying, and just hearing stuff all. And I say, Lord, I just need you to strengthen me. Help me. You know, I started saying, oh, God, and sir, just all kind of, all kind of stuff sweated up there. Just the life. I mean, it's that human part of it. But let me tell you about the grace part of God. Mm-hmm. And sometimes because of his grace. Yeah. So while we were praying, I did my part. I prayed my part. And then, you know, God come in. She started coming into agreement. And she just all of a sudden stopped. And she said, T, the Lord gave me this scripture right here. Because, you know, when whoever start out the prayer, they have the scripture. So I read my passage of scripture. And so she's <laughs> praying. So they just come in agreement with what I already prayed. But she did a different. She said, the Lord gave me a scripture for you while we're praying. And she said, to Wanda, fear thou not. To Wanda, I am with thee. To Wanda, be not dismayed. To Wanda, I am thy God. Yeah. To Wanda, I'm strengthening you right now. Yes, and yes. He said again, to Wanda, I'm strengthening you right now. Yes, I will help you. Mm, oh, my God. Do you all know woo, what that did to me at that moment, Pastor? Because the Lord knew his grace. Because I began to read, and it was because I have faith. He just came to strengthen the faith. That's what you got to understand, because sometimes we refuse to give up. We refuse to yeah. doubt him. I don't care what comes at you. And so what God does, because of his grace, he comes to strengthen. He comes to strengthen our faith even the more. So I can imagine... I don't think Joshua wasn't strong. Mm-hmm. I just said, I believe, Pastor, he came back to tell him, go ahead and keep being strong. Yeah. Be not strong and don't get discouraged because he knew, God knew that you're about to encounter some stuff. So while you're standing strong right here, I need 
going through, when you walk in that uprightness before God, he is for you. Now, even when you can't see it, God is for you even when you can't see it, when you don't feel it, and definitely when you don't understand it. Yeah. Now, I don't know that that makes sense when you don't feel it, when you don't see it. And when you don't understand it, when you know that he's for you, when you know that God is for you, my goodness. Woo, he's for me when everything looks like it's falling apart. Amen. He still says, do not fear and do not be afraid. Amen. And so that has been just resonating within me the rest of the day. And so this word translated here as afraid also means, you know, fearful. We do not fear, do not be afraid. And then one of the things I think I've already said this is that it's mentioned, and I didn't know this, that that phrase, be not, be not afraid, is in the Bible context over 365 times. Be not afraid. And so when God says the same thing over and over again, it suggests we need to listen to what he's saying to us. He's telling us we don't have to fear because that thing right there is just a shadow. But when I step into the situation, guess what? Then when light, all you need is a little light penetrating through. And when light penetrates through, it absorbs what? Darkness. When light penetrates through, it absorbs. When, when something it, it is absorbed, what happens? It takes it. And that's what I so love about him. Do, don't be afraid. I am with you. Do not fear because God is with you. And so we stand on his word. We stand on his promises. We stand on all that he's provided to us. I don't know, but I, I, I've been reading, I know Pastor probably reading it too, um, T.D. Jake's new book, Crushing. Oh, man. Pastor, you been reading? I read Oh, man. <laughs> it's, some, it's some good stuff in it. It is good. Because I, I think I said this before, he said there, he said, everybody has something in their life that brings about a crushing. Even. But it's not designed to destroy us. Never designed to destroy. I think I've been studying about seasons. There's so much in that, and I believe that at some point, what I do know, Pastor, is that He's bringing it into a season. Because I recognize that God doesn't allow us to just linger out there uh, mm -hmm. inevitably. Mm -hmm. But He brings an end and a closing. Now, it doesn't mean that something else may not start as he begins to take us to another level, but it just means he puts a pin in that thing right there. Yeah. So he says, while you're going through, don't be afraid. Yeah. When trouble comes, he is with you. In the storm, he is with you. Amen. So let's look at this. We talked about Psalms 27 and 1. And so this is the thing I want you to, to look at this. The question, why must, why must we not allow ourselves to fear? Number one, the, the, and, I, and I talked about this earlier, the worst um, that the enemy can bring is that um, the, the spirit of fear, and it becomes uh, an enemy of conquest. Fear becomes an enemy of conquest. You know what I'm saying? So when we have fear, we can't, it's, it's hard for us to win. It's difficult to win. Uh, it's difficult to go into a battle already knowing you're going to lose. Yes. Because you have nothing to hope for. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And so this is where faith comes in. Because the scripture comes back and says, well, you say, well, T, when we don't, what happens when we don't see victory? There's a difference between seeing defeat but not seeing victory. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because you can still be hopeful. In other words, I'm not believing that there is defeat, even though I can't see the wind right now, but I know it's coming. Because the scripture comes and says, what does a man have to hope for that which he can already see? So now our faith 
helps us to believe that we've already won. Yeah. Even when we can't see it, even when all the cards on the table says something different, you ever been there and you still say, that's all right, I'm trusting, I'm believing God. You go on and believe in him all the way. Sometimes even through class, I remember y'all telling me when I was going through class that it was difficult getting that master's. And sometimes in my mind, I was like, oh, God, I don't know how I'm going to make it. But I believe what God said. Yes. And sometimes you just have to believe the word that he has said. All right? So Psalms 27 and 1, put that one in. <coughs> and so looking at this. Talking about the enemy of conquest in Numbers, the 14th chapter. Remember that God promised to give Israel the land of Canaan as an inheritance. Yes. Remember, He promised that. But what happened? Fear. Because of fear, they allowed the opportunity of victory to pass them by. This is why we hold on to the word that God promised us. And sometimes you say, well, I didn't hear the Lord ain't speak nothing specifically to me. Well, just remember the word. You're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. Sometimes you got to believe simply what the scripture has said. Remember the scripture. Remember what the word has simply said. That you are more than an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. In other words, you're more than just conquered it. But you conquered that which should have been conquered. You conquered it two times, three times. How did you overcome it? So let's consider some truths about fear. Number one, fear is a weapon used by the enemy to kill your dreams. Fear is a weapon used by the enemy to kill your dreams, to frustrate. So we are talking about what the Israel, going back to Numbers, the Israelites, their, their complaints they angered the Lord. And so he kind of rose up against the whole nation. He was a little disturbed with them. And I believe there's a time when the Lord wants us to mature in our faith. We've been talking about faith. This is month number seven, six. six. So at some point that seed should have not just been planted, but watered, yeah. and there should be some growth, some sprouts, some fruit yeah. coming forth as a result of the word that has come forth. And so imagine here the children of Israel been delivered, brought them out of Egypt, who, what is it? brought them out of Egypt, look at this, but yet it's still during this time when they could have overcome, they didn't. They chose not to. Amen. Okay? In Numbers that 14th, around the 20th, God said to Moses, I have forgiven according to your request. Because Moses had to intervene for the children of Israel. They had cried out that God was, you know, they refused to get to a place where they simply trusted God. And we don't, want, we don't want to get to that place. Especially God is feeding us the word. He's telling us to soar on the wings of faith. Amen, amen. And so that means at some point, faith will be challenged. How many of y'all, since we've been studying this, your faith has been challenged? Do you like your response? Did you observe your response? To be honest. Yes, you some yes. But what about those who did? Did you like it? So what did you do? Did you give up and fall down? No. No, but you got back up and did what? Yes. Amen. Okay, number two. Fear will always oppose. Fear will always go against divine purpose. Pastor Dutch. Pastor Fear will always oppose or go against divine purpose. Y'all know these glasses, sometimes I can't see. I just see right in front of me. Sorry. Fear will always go against divine purpose. Amen. What do I mean by go against divine purpose? Anyone? Let me get some, some feedback. I don't want to do all the talking. 
What do I mean by it go against divine purpose? Anybody get a Yes. I'll say, um, God, to be on. Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of times God may be telling you, telling you something. You know it's God, but the fear will stay in because sometimes if you feel like this, you're not adequate for what he wants you to do. And sometimes we listen to the enemy and then his mind. Let him play with our mind instead of knowing um, it's time for you to do it. Because sometimes we have that faith, you know, but then um, sometimes we doubt ourselves and we let that fear overtake us. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else want to respond to What are some things that the Lord has kind of charged you to do in this season? When I say in this season, in the season where we have been learning about faith. Where sometimes in order for God, for us to see where we are in our faith, he challenges us in our faith. He challenges us in our faith. Not for you, but for who? Uh -huh. Yes. So you can see where you are. So that means if I'm not in that place where I should be, and I was like, man, I should have handled that so differently. Yeah. I was telling them um, during... Uh, the conflict resolution class, and, and I know that the Lord was dealing with me. And it's about faith, about trusting him, about trusting him. And I told him, always, I always use my husband as an example. Y'all know me. But the Lord teaches me because he humbles me so, and I, our relationship has grown so much since I humbled myself. Praise God. <laughs> and it's like, oh, my mother, yes. And so this particular time, you know, I talk about my car, my, 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 my car, and, and so I gave them the example we were talking about, and this has to do with faith. I'm going to show you what it means because it's faith and trusting and believing God for what He said. Yeah. And so I told y'all that you know when my, my when his car broke down, he used my envoy, my envoy truck. But before his car broke down, my envoy truck had been sitting there broke down for a long time. That means he didn't fix it, even though he could have. Amen. So when his car broke down, he fixed the envoy so he could ride. The envoy. So I talked about that in the the, the, the the conflict resolution class a while ago. Remember, see? So now, you know, months pass. So now he gets his car fixed and the envoy, the envoy breaks down and he has to get his car fixed. So he gets his car fixed. And so my envoy, guess what? It's broken down. It's gone. It's down for the count this time. So months pass is sitting there, sitting there. So I went and got me another truck, my work truck. Got the work truck. I ain't had the truck for one month. I promise you it wasn't a month. And guess what? Walked out the door one day, he came and said, I need to hold the keys to your BMW. I said, who? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? Yes, what I do? I shut my mouth. I tell you, you being sick or do something. 
tell you now. But you know, I don't care what nobody else say. I always like to be true because I believe if I was probably in all of my right faculties all feeling good, I probably said, nah, Lord, you don't have to forgive me for this one, but I'm about to tell you. <laughs> but I think I said, okay. Work, Lord, but work. That form of discipline and mm-hmm. trusting Him, and I just had to let it go. And so I didn't break with Him. I said, God, help me to be obedient. Yes. Obedience is better than sacrifice. It's a, and so all of this in trusting Him in every area of my life of faith, believing and trusting God, all of this has to do with faith in God, mm-hmm. believing, obedience, because you can't have. Um, uh, implicit obedience without having implicit trust. You can't have implicit trust without having implicit faith in God. They all line up. It's like a three-legged stool, isn't it, Pastor? You remove one of those legs, guess what happens? You are liable to fall. Teach this word, girl. So you need them. You need each one. And sometimes we think we can stand on the two, but I bet you you'll be teetering, tottering the whole time. But because I did, it wasn't until now. God didn't. It wasn't no next day, and He was driving. It wasn't the next day. But after a while, mm. by and by, I came home, and the cover was over my car. Thank you. <laughs> I just smiled and said, "Thank you." But I'm gonna tell you, He <laughs> did more for me. Yes, Lord. Because what it did was like. It helped me to understand that he's developing me and he's teaching me something even through this process. And so I asked God the question. Say, ask the question. I said, God, so I said, God, I, I pause for a moment to say, I don't want, I, I don't want to be in a place. I said, so when you heal me completely, and when I'm good and I know I'm good, I said, God, I'm good. I'm going to do my best to serve you with everything in my heart. Do y'all understand? I just, I believe, I believe with all everything in me that I'm going to still give up everything I got. Yeah. Woo, my God, y'all, y'all can meet me there. Y'all can see where I'm going. So, so look at this. I'm just, that was my testimony. And then it just, I, I didn't say a word about it. And guess what? He didn't either. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. But we were talking about conflict resolution. Praise God. Sometimes it's just quick to shut your mouth. But God says, be quiet. We don't always understand. And yes, sometimes it is most difficult. Praise God. But we have faith to believe that God is going to work things out for our good. Amen. There will always oppose or go against God's divine purpose. Number two, fear will always keep us in the dark. Ah, Isaiah 59 and 10, I thought this was an awesome passage of scripture. It said, like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. And it says, at midday we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. Oh, my goodness. The enemy wants to keep us blinded from the truth of God. He wants us to believe that we can repent all the time and then that's good enough. Yes, yes, he affords us the opportunity to repent. He does. But imagine the grace. Imagine, oh, what the reward when you don't have to repent. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling. There's a place in our life that deals with faith that God wants to move us past. I forgive me. Past what I repent of this. The same thing two times, three times. I understand that yes, he chooses to forgive us. But oh my goodness. This comes a place where we stand up and we sit this flesh down. That's what I said before. There comes a time when you take ownership and you sit your own flesh 
That's right. That's right. Mm. You command your flesh to sit down. Amen. Thank you. That's when faith stands up in you. Yes. Fear will always be a coward. Mm. Right. Yes. In other words, it will give in to the sexual desires. It whimpers and it gives in every time. It gives in to your gratifications and your desires because it's so bad. Fear and lack of mature spiritual vision stops people from being able to see the Lord's blessing. So what have you learned on your faith walk? There should be some nuggets of gold that we've learned on our faith walk. Number four, fear is always followed by frustration. Fear is always followed by frustration. Glory to God. Fear is the threshold to frustration. It's the threshold to frustration. It says those who have experienced it have seen their dreams crumble. They become infected with fear as a result of being robbed of their reward. And so now that we've talked about fear, let's, let's see how now faith towers over fear, okay? This is why we can choose faith over fear. Through the word of God, Psalms 119 and 66 says this, teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your command. Number one, to building your faith is know your word. Know the word. Know the word of God. Know the word. Become familiar. Become acquainted. I'm not saying that you're able to regurgitate Psalms 119 or Psalms 27 or even Psalms 23. But I'm simply saying know your word. Have a familiarity of where you can go when it comes to the word of God. Know how to give access to your word. And it says, knowing God's word is the foundation and beginning of choosing faith over fear. Our knowledge of the word can be a deciding factor in the strength or weakness of your faith. It is a deciding factor. So God's word gives us courage to fight the enemy. You ever notice in prayer how you're empowered? The scripture, that scripture empowered me this morning. It gave me more strength. Amen. It gave me more strength. Number two, obey the word. Yes, that part right there. Obey the word of God. In James 2 and 22, it says, you see that his faith and his actions were working together. I, all of these scriptures are not King James, if you notice. I try to bring them so amplify, so people can, uh, amplify living Bibles so people can understand them. You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. James 2 and 22. We commit ourselves to obey God's word by our actions. Obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. Obey what God has said to you. He says, fear can be paralyzing. Faith is energizing when we put God's word into action. Fear paralyzing. Look at that. Faith energizing. When we put God's word into action, when we begin to obey God's word, we are energized. Faith comes to cycle us, to put us in a place where we cannot move, where we cannot trust, where we cannot hope in God. Number three, speak the word. How many of y'all been speaking the word over your situation? Yes. Decreeing, declaring. Amen. Speaking the word over your situation. What you come, what comes out of your mouth? Amen. Glory to God. Speaking faith and not fear. Speaking faith and not doubt. 
I can do, I will do. I am an overcomer. I am here. It's already done. Do y'all understand? That's life. Glory to God. It, it, comments. Y'all give me some feedback. Y'all give me some feedback on this thing. I feel like I'm all I feel I'm a little high. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord in joining this tremendous day. And I thank God because I think every day we have to deal with fear. Every day we wake up. And especially when you're working, you want to do a great job when you're on your job. And so when I went to my job on Monday, and Mondays are kind of like the most toughest day because that's the new beginning of the week. New beginning, you don't know what type of patients you're going to get in on. So each room I went into, I told the patient, we're going to have a good day. This is a wonderful day. And I kept saying that all day to my patients. <coughs> Until one of the little ladies said, well, are you having a good day? <laughs> and I said, guess what? Yes, I am. Let me say this, saints of God. If we declare it, and we believe it, and we trust God in it, because but even for our door, I pray. And I said, God, you be into this day. You know what's going to happen before I even get there. So I'm trusting you in everything I do. So I'm going to speak it. I'm going to speak your word. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. Amen. Right? And I spoke it. And that day went so soon. I had seven of those little people. Only one room I went in, the vibes wasn't right. And that little lady wanted to be so picky. Are you sure you know what you <laughs> mean? Is that natural ball or whatever? I'm like, this is what the doctor ordered for you. Yeah. But anyway, God allowed the day to be good. And you know what? I said, Lord, thank you so much. Because my heart was like, I don't know what it's going to be like. You know, the unknown sometimes causes you to be fearful. But when you trust in the Lord, yeah. say, yes, Lord. no matter what it's going to look like, I'm trusting you, Lord. And I know you're going to able to make me through it. And because I claimed it and I believed it, God did. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else? Come on, give me your feedback. Y'all been in this thing for seven months. Six months now, praise God. Amen. Having faith to stand. We're talking about speaking the word of God. Speaking the word of God over your situation. You know, what is it that helps us to be able to speak the word? Amen. What is it? How do you speak the word over your situation? I love the analogy that um, mother, mother gave. One, I remember once when a young man was, we were talking. And you know how you can pray and you begin to declare something? And then it didn't come to pass. And then it didn't come to pass. So they were watching. Now what you going to say? It didn't come. I said, let me, God got something. And I thought, ooh, God got something. You have to understand where you are. When you trust God, you just know he's going to work it out for your Amen. good. Amen. I was so proud of um, my, my niece. She was uh, she was calling me. She said, my T, you know, um, she had an interview. Somebody had an interview for her. And uh, this is like we talked about, it was maybe, say, 1 o'clock. And we were talking about what God is doing. And she was so excited about feeding her spirit with, you know, Joel Osteen just going on. And she said, I know God's working this out and this about the job. And then check this out. She called me back at 2 o'clock. She said, Auntie, the people say I didn't get the job because of so-and-so. But I, I, she said, well, ain't God good? I know he got something better for me. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I, I can't make that up. I was so, I was so proud because I've been in a place where some young people say, see, I believe God and God. No, when we just continue to have faith, yeah. and I always say this to people, just because he didn't work it out right then, that didn't mean he ain't going to work right. it out. That's right, that's right. I read, I was reading today about this young man, the young lady, she said she had uh, gotten cancer three times. Three three different types of cancer, Pastor. And she put it down, she laid it on the line. She said, you know, most times one cancer is as a result of another cancer. Yeah. And so I'm tuning in, right? She said, but she had three different types of cancer. One was melanoma of the skin, one was um breast cancer, and another was was AL um, cancer in the blood. You know, three different related 
because of nothing but tasks. Just three different types that they found. She said, but, but this was her, her, her insight. God caught all of them mm. at an early stage. And I remember when when this when this one was the first one with breast cancer, yeah, and I, I said, well, Lord, I was still on medication when this one came. And then they said they're like totally not related. No re correlation. But I said, there won't be no third time. I That's right. The scripture that I'm gonna do. And this affliction shall yeah. not rise for a oh, second oh. time. We're going to pray in it. But I'm believing it. That's I'm right. I'm believing him for his word. I'm believing him. That's all we have. Guess That's what? It. All we have is the word of God to stand on. Yes. Take away your word. You fall down. Amen. So imagine if you don't get into your word, if you don't read your word, if you have nothing to build you up on your word, you have nothing to stand on. Amen. The word of God helps you to tower over the enemy. Just imagine the word of God being a platform for you in so many ways. But what is a platform? This is me down here without the word. This is what the word of God does. Yeah. And it takes you higher. And if I can step up on this thing, that's what the word is right there. It keeps mounting you up higher. And so now all of that stuff, frustration, don't have no, all of that is right where? Down there. And where are you? Up here. And so that means now you're not only looking down on it, but you can what? Yeah. I know that sounds theatrical. I get a TJ. <laughs> 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 I know. What do y'all understand what I'm saying? I know it seems theatrical, but if you can envision yourself uh, higher than your circumstances, yeah, that's right. that means you're taller than everybody wants to be taller than that thing that's coming at them. Yeah, sure. If I was bigger than my bullies that chased me home, do you think I would have ran home? Oh my God, I was in sixth grade. Imagine if a, a, a second grader couldn't deal with me home. Do y'all understand? It's always something bigger than you that you fear. So when you get bigger than it, and so I told this story, I told this story about the man who, uh, uh, he was uh, the first man that climbed Mount Everest. Yeah. I told y'all heard that story? Hundreds. Yeah. You are the first man that climbed Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, and, and I was telling the story, he climbed Mount Everest, he was there, but he almost made it. And, 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 and he didn't make it back down, and it was a group of them, I'm paraphrasing this, and they, they went to look for him, they went to honor him because he was the first one. And so they, when they went up there, they found his body. I said, I know it didn't sound good, but they found his body. And they came back down to convene. Look at this. They came back down to convene. It was a group of them, and they were talking about it. They were memorializing him. And they said this. The man said this. He said, Mount Everest, you've beaten us one time. Mount Everest, you've beaten us twice. Mount Everest, you've beaten us three times. Then it said this, but you can't get any bigger, but we can. Do you understand? Mount Everest is what it is. It cannot grow anymore. But it said we can. We grow knowledge. We grow power over the enemy. And some of those situations, they're not getting any bigger. But we are. Our faith helps us to get Bigger. Yeah. And so you tell that devil, ah, oh, you might, you may have defeated me one time. Yeah. Cancer, you may have tried to get me again, but who you can't get any bigger. Yeah. I can. My faith is growing stronger. Yeah. And that's what I want to encourage you today. When you have faith, when you choose faith over fear, yeah. you get bigger. You get bigger, yes, indeed. You get bigger, you get bigger. Oh my goodness, I'm excited. Y'all can tell I'm excited. I ain't been here a long time, y'all. <laughs> Pray, God. Pray the word. Number four, we're almost done. We talked about speaking the word. Now that you speak it, you got to pray the word. Pray the word of God. Pray the scriptures. In 1 Timothy 4, 4 and 5, it says, but everything God created is good. Nothing 
is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God in prayer. Pray the word of God. Yeah. What I have learned in this season, Pastor Judy, Dr. Julie, is I pray the scriptures. Pray the scriptures. We simply pray the word of God. Just pray his word. You Google all your scriptures concerning your situation. Google, Google, Google all of them. Gather all of them and just have them at your resource. Just keep them with you. Email it to yourself. So when you're going through stuff, just put it up. My prayer against lack. Yeah. My prayer against frustration. My yeah. prayer against anxiety. My prayer against sickness and disease. Put it up and just start praying the word. Yeah. This is how we become bigger. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's good. Glory to God. Pray the word of God. Pray the Bible. Pray what the Bible yes. says. Yes. Amen. Any questions or comments? I'm almost done. Praise God. Number five. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Pastor, live the word. Yes. Yes. That's it. Live the word. Yes. Live the word. Live the word. Living it. Key. Yeah. If you pray it, you speak it, you show up better living. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Live the word of God. Oh my goodness. Glory to God. Any questions or comments? Live the word. Know, obey, speak, pray, live. Amen. Amen. That's it. Know the word, obey the word, speak the word. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, pray the word and live the word. If you can do those five, those five right there, yes. your faith, you will have the ability to choose faith over fear. Let's go yes. back to home. No, what? Let's go to home. No, obey, obey. speak, obey. pray, obey. live. You take nothing else away. Take that away with you tonight. That I must know the word. I must obey the word. I must what? Speak the word. Pray the word. And then live the word of God. That means my life lines up with what I pray. Yeah. My life lines up with what I just spoke and declared in the atmosphere. Amen. And I'm obeying, I'm obedient to what yeah. God has spoken. What God has said, even when I don't understand it, even yeah. if I don't see it, feel it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes, Dr. G. Yeah. I see. You've been quiet all night long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Someone can't wear me out. <laughs> Amen. But I, I just want to say this is absolutely fantastic. Um, I've just been praying and asking God, you know, stretch, stretch, stretch. So in our summer camp, for the first time, um, we have a with us before you see. Um, and they keep coming. It's like it won't stop. But uh, you all know, like on the radio, I'm always talking about uh, talking, talking about how we're gonna bring our camera, I mean yes. the family together. And uh, I had one lady that say, you was talking one day. And I I believe that God can use you to work miracles. So she brought her artistic son to us. Uh -huh. mm, that's right. And so her son is there, and he's artistic. I've never dealt with an artistic person before. But what it caused me to do was to pray. And because I don't I don't want, and I told her this morning, I don't want to send your son away because he has a handicap right. or a disability. Right. Because we can't serve everybody. Mm. And I told her, even if we have to find some help to come in. We would. I would not turn your son away. I said, I promise you, I will not turn your son away. And she said that. She said, please don't. But this is what I had to do. I had to get on that computer. Uh -huh. And I had to learn from yesterday to today some stuff about artis ar artism. Oh, yeah. But Arteria knows artis artism. Her aunt was artistic. So she grew up with that all her whole life. And this little boy, and I asked the mom, so we went to the movie today, what, she gonna, what are you going to do? She told me, and she said, don't fear. She said, because I hear you on the radio, and what all you have spoken. She said, I've listened to you for three years. Three years she was listening. And her son is 13. I don't I stopped at 12. But her son is 13. Elementally, they, they said that boy has not been overly anything. And she said, when he came home yesterday, 
He said, Pastor Judy is my friend. Carol walked in. And what, what did he say to you? This, this lady has in the God that I serve. Yes. Help us to serve, to serve this young man. Help. And she told me this morning, he's going to be different when he leaves here. I know it. You know? And so my, and, and my prayer was, God, give us that wisdom yes. that would help her and help him. Well, that's not all of it. We got another little girl starting Monday who have Down syndrome. And so here I go again. I'm like, Lord, I've never dealt with, with I, I've never dealt with this. And so today, and I was talking to Ella Whitney. I'm like, I don't know what God, did. I don't know where he's taking, taking us, or where he's stretching. And I, and, but as you were sit, sit, talking, I said, but Lord, do not allow me to allow fear yeah. to come in and not serve That's right. these children who need this service. You know, I say help us, but it's teaching the children because what what um, the other comp uh, uh, component of dreams of the day the Lord got us doing now is family affair. And I had one of the parents to say, I heard you talk about it, and I want you to come into our house. Now this is what I told. This is what God has given. She said, and help teach us how to be a family. And that's what I said I want to do. And, and it's like the Lord is just like here. You know, and I said, Lord, give us wisdom. And then give me the right people to help and put this together. So y'all know what he, um, who am I partnering with? Um, um, and they, and they, they said, this, oh, one church, one child. And so they said, you can help. We sat there for two hours with the reunification process. Where we don't, parents, children don't have to be taken or kept from their family, but bring your, bring the program, this family of family. And I just spoke on the radio what God was doing, went before the commissioners, because this is what God had, had, had given to me, the family affair. Just to sit down and talk. And this is going to teach them how to have a round table. And what God gave to me was, if they don't have a table in the house, Put a table in the house. Teach them to sit at the table and talk. And get these families together. And I'm just seeing God doing all this. And that's why I'm just, Dr. Davis is talking tonight. I'm like, Lord, help me not to allow fear of what I haven't done to come against your purpose and your promise of what you've given to me to do. But he ain't just given to me by myself. He bringing it together. So he bringing a whole organization. One church, one child. All right, and listen to this, sister. Oh, baby, this is gonna get you right here. I was talking to the parent that's bringing to the parent about all this. She said, "Well, the Oasis Girls Center for Girls will partner with you, and they did this one summer. They started a business in their summer camp, invited the city commissioners in the city." And they brought them there and they brought stuff. I, I mentioned it, then I mentioned it to them. And immediately, 20 children came up with what they want to do with their business. What's the name of the business? Amazing? Amazing Treats. They want to get all these Rice Krispie treats and make them from different kinds. And they want to set up all this stuff. And now they want to design their own t-shirt for the summer. And they said they want to, and we can buy it ourselves. I'm like, sound good. <laughs> but this is it is. We're going to raise over $1,000 for these children. We're going to give $500 to the homeless shelter. Yeah. And $500 back to Dream Builders so we can prepare for their summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that day it's like it just goes. And I'm, I'm hearing the Lord tonight saying, don't fear. Do not allow fear to cover your purpose or to take away your purpose. 
Or what? Don't let it cover it up because you don't know. So what did I do? I've been reading about autism. We was in CPR at first aid training last night. The lady who was uh, talking, I talked to her about it. Everybody had suggestions of what to do, what not to do, you know. And so that's what it's about. And we can get, and you have to have people around you who go on somewhere. Right. <sighs> So I'm, I'm just, I'm excited, and, it's, and I have been saying like, and I'm like, wow, God, you're talking to me, thank you. You know, because those things are not, those, uh, the autism and the Down syndrome, are not things I'm familiar with. But I've been reading, yeah. studying, and asking God, and praying, yeah. and finding scriptures, how to help people who are in, uh, uh, situations that have taken them outside of life. So, thank you for blessing. Amen. 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 This is our encouragement tonight as we close. Amen. That you will practice those five things we talked about. Yeah. Being open, reading your word, knowing your word, living your word, praying your word, speaking your word. And take an area in your life I'm sure we all have something and begin to practice yeah. in that area and doing all those things we just said. And allow God to strengthen you so you can see, you know, you can see those areas of improvement because at this time in your life where you are, you should see some improvement. Yeah. And I, I'm not, you know, but, but you should sometimes be proud of your own self yeah. in some areas. I don't know about you, but I'm, there's some areas in my life I'm like, wow, thank you, Jesus. I finally made it. Yeah. <laughs> I finally got it right. It feels good yes. to get it right. It feels so good because the only thing it does is help you to keep wanting to do what? Get it right. Amen. So this is where we are. This is our charge. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing. We're excited about his faith and where he's taking us and where um, we are, where we will go. Uh, um, well, Dr. Seuss said, all the places we will go. Because of our faith, I want y'all to say that all the places, all the places we will go. Maybe first, all the places I will go. All the places that dream you will go. All because of our faith. Yeah. God bless you. Put your hands together. Bless you.